Happy midwinter, everybody. Thanks so much for coming out on this snowy night to hear the wondrous tale of the darkest time of the year. Deep in the Bavarian Alps, in an age before the light bulb and the electric heater, people count the long, frozen nights. And they keep lookout, for midwinter is a time of magic. Phantom riders charge across the sky, and goblins sneak down the chimney. But on December 5th, a figure of light and holiness comes to cleave the darkness. Saint Nicholas, bearing treats for children who've learned their prayers. And behind him stalks Krampus, whip in hand to punish the children who have not. Be good and attend your studies, children, for on the eve of St. Nicholas Day, the saint will come. You'll see the snowy soft beard, high mitre hat, and crooked staff of the old bishop. And he'll bring cakes, dried fruit, nuts, and candies to children. He might even ask you to recite a poem or prayer, because after all, the saint loves education. But woe betide the disobedient child, the lazy child, the one who hasn't studied. For along with Nicholas comes his companion, Krampus. Krampus of the hooved feet, of the clawed hands and chains. Krampus with his lolling red tongue and goatish horns. Shuffling and lopping so, the great bells on his back, the size of babies' heads, clatter with the sound of buckshot in a can. Krampus, who beats naughty children with his bundle of switches or horsetail whip. Perhaps he might not beat you himself. If you are unworthy of a gift from Nicholas, Krampus may give your parents a bundle of birch twigs to hang over the fireplace to use as they see fit. And those are the lucky children. The unlucky ones he takes in his great sack. What becomes of them? No one knows. He may drown them in icy streams, devour them, or spirit them directly to hell. And worst of all, there is never just one Krampus. Nicholas travels with a mob of three, four, or a half dozen. Okay, so you all might be wondering, where do these devils come from? And why are they traveling with Nicholas on Krampusnacht? In truth, no one knows. Krampus emerged in the Alps, appearing in Germany, Austria, and northern Italy. Yet he is not a creature of any one country. The mountains themselves birthed him. Some say he's ancient and pagan, but this is unlikely. Bavaria is deeply Catholic, and yes, though devils like Krampus may originate in the forest, much like the ones we sit in now, <laughs> centuries of Christian folklore and church teachings have changed them. If Krampus is a pagan devil, he is a thing only half-remembered, far from his roots. But those who know the stories of Nicholas's life know that he is no stranger to frightening companions. Of course, there's the kindly stories, like where Nicholas came across the house of a destitute man who could not afford to pay dowry for his three daughters to marry, and instead planned to sell them to a brothel. For two nights, unseen, Nicholas threw bags of gold into their windows, and on the third night, he threw it down the chimney. It's why they say the saint brings presents. But there's also the story of the innkeeper and his wife, who killed three schoolboys and chopped them up putting them in a barrel to sell their meat. Blessed Nicholas uncovered the crime and resurrected the boys, whole in body. In some parts of France, they say, this murderous innkeeper, Old Man Whipper, now punishes children for the saint the same way Krampus does in the Alps. Now, of course, everyone knows these stories because of the old Christmas plays. And some say that Krampus came from there too, because these plays also feature the devil himself stalking the stage, wearing a hairy suit and wooden mask, ranting and sometimes lunging at the audience, with two fellow demons restraining him with the chains that wrap his body. And, at times, he drags evil characters into a smoky hellmouth and the darkness backstage. And that Lucifer, so often on stage with Nicholas, looks quite a bit like Krampus. And as if that wasn't terrifying enough, other winter demons exist and may have even birthed the saint's vile companion. Folks say that the 12 days of Christmas are a time for all types of ghosts and monsters to wander. But among the most frightening is the witch Frau Perschta, she of the iron nose and scissors. 
She is far older than Krampus. Indeed, some folks say she was the goddess before the church came. But fallen goddess or not, these days the ancient crone visits houses to see if children have done their chores and completed their flax spinning. If they have, she will reward them with a coin. If not, she will creep in as they sleep, eviscerate them with her iron shears, and fill their empty bellies with unspun flax, wood shavings, and garbage. You don't want a belly full of garbage, do you, children? Actually, it's for Pershta that families leave out milk pudding, bread, and dumplings overnight. Well, for her and the horde of unquiet spirits and demons that form her entourage. Demons that, I will remind you, look a great deal like Krampus. But whether from the stage, Pershta's mob, or both, the Krampus works with St. Nicholas now. The night before the feast of St. Nicholas, the saint and his demonic attendants run through the town and visit children in their homes. Nicholas quizzes them on their memorized passages, while the Krampuses swarm in afterward to howl, shake their chains, and snap their horsehair whips in threat. Now you may have heard older children say that there is no Krampus, that the monsters which run through the town and visit your home are merely young men dressed in wooden masks, horns, and animal skins props easily available to alpine farmers. But you're too smart to believe that, aren't you, children? You've seen the Krampus at the village runs, lashing people with their whips and roaring in your homes, reaching for you as you shelter behind the dining room table. And maybe you've even been one of the bold ones, pushing your way to the front of the crowd at the Krampus run, so that when the monster approaches, you can prove that you're not frightened that you can reach out and touch the devil's fur. A test of bravery, a rite of passage. You knew in that touch that Krampus was real. For how can one touch a legend? And after all, if Krampus was not real, how could he travel to America? I've heard that in the German towns of Pennsylvania, he goes by the name of Belschnigel, a long-tongued, horned man who spreads cake and candy on the ground. And as children scramble for them, he strikes their back with a rod. Don't believe me? In that case, visit Pennsylvania Dutch country on a snowbound night and wait. In the dark of midwinter night, you'll hear Belschnigel's switch tap on the frozen window pane. Rat tat tat. Rat tat tat. Rat tat tat. So don't fool yourself into thinking that Krampus is the only strange being that haunts the holiday season. There's the wild hunt that tears across the sky, Pershta and her attendants, midwinter werewolves, or Kagatio, a smiling log that children in Catalonia sing to, warm with a blanket, and beat with a stick until it poops out candy and presents. Perhaps I'll tell you about them next year. Until then, happy holidays, everyone. And remember, be good. Krampus is watching. You know, if he is watching, we should probably sing one of our favorite Krampus songs, right? He sees you when you're sleeping, and he hits you with the rake. He knows that you've been really bad, so we'll drown you in a lake. Everybody! No? Okay, just me.